You're listening to the Mornings of Lone Star here at IRLoneStar.com, 909. Starting things a little late today, but we are here for Meet the Candidates. You're probably wondering where the heck I've been. We've been recording a segment for the Willis Hour for next week. The chief of police of Wills was so nice to come in and record his segment and let you guys know safety is coming up here in Montgomery County, especially if you're going on some trips for the summer. So stick around for that. For That's for the Willis Hour next Thursday at their normal time at 11 a.m. on the 4th. But right now we have Nathan Arizani in the studio. Morning, dude. Morning, morning, dude. Uh, <laughs> man, you just got me off guard right there. That's great. <laughs> Well, Dude, what's going on outside? We have a posse here. Outside is that a Rowdy studio. Hayden posse? No, I think it's just coffee drinkers. This is what I'm thinking. They're, they're wired. But we do have a special guest today. Uh, oh, I appreciate Mr. Rowdy Hayden coming in and being uh, an impromptu guest because our usual guest is canceled on us. Can you feel cancel on us? You think? I can't believe that. I can't believe that, can you? <laughs> but we're hanging out in the studio, having fun, meet the candidates. We're on Facebook, Lone Star Radio, also on um, Montgomery County Lifestyle with Nathan Arizotti. So if you have questions, oh, great. So people are honking. Noise is going to happen. Next thing you know, a train's going to come by. But uh, but if you have questions for the guests, all you got to do is go to Facebook, go to Lone Star Night Radio or Montgomery County Lifestyle. And I know Nathan's probably uh, responsive because his response time on Facebook is like zero percent. Or was it zero time? Mine's like an hour. Mine I, used to be about an hour, but uh, I've been trying to pay attention. So many people are getting involved in this. Like this guest we got here, it's insane the people that he's got. You know, making comments, go Rowdy, that's my dude. You even have the Brett Ligon train out there. No, I got a question for you, Rowdy. Uh, welcome to the stu- studio, by the way. I'm really glad you're here. Thank you for having me. And you're running for Constable Precinct Precinct Four. And are you already the constable there? I'm currently. Because you have a the shirt that's constable. embroidered. So it's like, yes. man, that's kind of jumping the gun, don't you think? <laughs> but uh, so you're already the constable. Already the constable there. Are you running? Uh, by yourself, or is there anybody running against you? Yes, I do have one opponent in the race. Okay, so people, you need to vote and listen to this interview with Rowdy and maybe vote for him. Uh, and make sure to register to vote, too. You have till February 1st, mctx.org slash election to check your registry status and also polling times for early voting and March 1st voting. So, uh, like, again, thank you so much for coming in. And I've been learning a lot about the constable's office through interviewing the different uh, precincts around here. I think total in Montgomery County we have five I have elected constables. All right. See, I'm learning. I'm paying attention. That's great. And uh, so we have five total in Montgomery County, and you are running for Constable Precinct? Precinct 4. 4. And which covers what area? That covers the eastern side of the county, Highway 59 corridor. Well, that's a long way over there. Is that Cleveland and all that kind of stuff? We or go that... up to the um, Liberty County line in Cleveland. Okay. So, man, see, that's that's actually what, what goes on over there. I've, I've only gone over there to see my brother. Who's uh, in Liberty, so that's the only time I ever really go in that area on a regular basis. So how is it over there? Well, it's um, it's a it's a big precinct. It's yeah. a growing precinct. It's, huge. it's one of the fastest growing parts of Montgomery County right now. We have the um, the Grand Parkway about to open up and the uh, Grand Theme Park coming in. So big things are happening in East Montgomery County. And one thing uh, I'm learning more about the constable's office is y'all do civil processing. That's kind of like your mandate in a sense, and you work with as a bailiff's for the local uh, courthouse and jails and all that kind of stuff. What other services does the uh, constable office number four do? Well, um, the Precinct 4 constable office, we offer full law enforcement services to our citizens. We do uh, proactive patrols. We do Internet crimes against children. Uh, Two of my officers handle all livestock-related calls throughout the precinct. And... um, Livestock calls. Livestock uh, abuse or neglect or loose livestock, su- such as that. Precinct 5 has two deputies that handle the western side of the county, and I have two that handle the eastern side. Now, are there limitations on that? Like, you don't necessarily talk about dogs. You're talking about calves and right. mainly, sheep and mainly horses. Mainly livestock. And okay, yes. so that's considered livestock. Thanks for Correct. explaining that one to me. Yeah, because you can actually visit you guys, see what you all do online at mctx.org. Just look up console precinct number 4. It actually has a list of everything you all do. Because uh, that's one thing that amazes me about the the variety in all the precincts here in Montgomery County. All have that specialized in that area, what the community needs in that precinct. Uh, with and one question I always follow up with a lot of people running, what do you plan on adding or subtracting uh, when you do become constable again? Well, certainly we want to keep keep the programs we have in in place currently. We want to continue that. We're um, we're we've set up citizen oriented programs which breaches the gap between law enforcement and the community allows citizens to be more involved with law enforcement uh, last night we had our second class of our second constable citizens academy 
uh, that's just another another tool that we use to get closer to the public. Now, as as a citizen, why would I want to be part of this class? What does it do for me as a person? It, um, you attend. It's a ten week program where you go one night a week and. You learn all different aspects of law enforcement. Our citizens class is a little bit different than others, more unique in the aspect that we not only talk about the constable's office and what we do, we bring the sheriff's department in, we bring the highway patrol in, we bring the district attorney's office in. The district attorney's office will tell you what happens to a case after we file the case. And we go above that, we bring a, a, a district or a county court judge in to tell you what the process is then. So... Um, some of the exciting things we do, uh, you get to see a demonstration of someone being tased with the taser. You get to, um, we, we have simulation, simulation weapons where we'll put citizens through the same type of scenario that we may be faced where it's a shoot, don't shoot situation. So let me ask you something. I got to jump in there. As the leader of the men in black, have you let anybody tase you to show them? Nathan, I've been tased several times. Um, <laughs> By Brett Ligon? No, not by Brett Ligon. But, Constable um, Ryan Gable? Neither one of them guys. But, um, okay, I'm, they're just they're, they're part of your fan club. They arrived this morning to cheer yeah, you I on. See them so what, is this men, what is Men in Black? What is this all about? I, go for it, brother. When, um, when I was elected in 2009 and took office, we changed the colors of the cars and the uniforms to black. We just wanted a drastic change from what it was. So we changed the cars to black, the uniforms more to a black tone, and shortly after that, the local media started terming us the Men in Black. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, it's been it's been a catchy phrase, and um, a lot of a lot of children in the community like it, and um, they, you know, they'll come up to us and, and 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 talk to us about it, and so. And that's one of the things Dick has been very very intrigued by, what a constable does. <clears throat> you know, Gene DeForest office right down the street, so he's been learning more and more. We all have, and listeners have, but everybody's got a different interpretation. What what have you done with your office? What what are some of the key uh, uh, projects, key uh, initiatives that you've done that have separated you than either somebody in the office prior to you or even some of the other constables and stuff? Well, Nathan, I believe that the constable's office should go above and beyond the constitutional duties. The constitutional duties of the constable's office is to serve the court, serve the civil process, the warrants. Um, our constitutional duties are fulfilled. Our court, Our courts are served. Our um, our civil process is is above beyond, and um, but I believe once we're once we're done with those duties, we should be going out and protecting our community. Uh, we should do more than just civil service, and quite frankly, the citizens in Precinct Four demand it. Uh, we listen to the needs of the citizens, and this is the feedback we get. They want their streets and their neighborhoods to be safer. What are some of the key initiatives that, that you've done that separate that, that have made your people safer? Well, we've, um, we're, we're a proactive agency. Our officers are able to go out on the street and try to identify the crime before it happens. Uh, they, they work uh, traffic incidents where they may um, stop a, a, drug, a drug dealer or a drug user before that person may go and steal somebody's property to pay for their drug habit. So we try to be initiative in that aspect. And um, so much so that since I've taken over and... Um, was elected constable. The Precinct 4 Constable's Office has become the fourth largest or most productive agency by volume and arrest in the in the county. Wow. So so <clears throat> who is who are some of the three that are in front of you? Because I want to compare that as far as volume and size. Um, oh, I'll tell you, me and Constable Gable are the top two, and then um, I don't have the exact numbers with me. I mean, like Sheriff's Department, Department of Public Safety. Oh, the as far as that, yes, the Sheriff's Department, the Highway Patrol, and the Conroe Police Department are, are the ones that are in front of us. Of course, they're countywide agencies. And they probably got anywhere from 150 to a couple of hundred, you know, law enforcement officers, and you have what? Correct. We have, counting myself, we have 28 full-time. Wow. Dude, that's awesome. That That is something to be proud of. That's But that's, that's, cool. that's I think that's the way the, um, the, the future is leading the constable's office. With Constable Gable over in Precinct 3, he's, he, he's doing some of the same programs that we're doing. Uh, we both were instrumental in bringing internet crimes against children to Montgomery County. Now then, all the constables have an investigator to investigate those type of crimes. And I believe you've got a connection. Your brother knows Rowdy or something, doesn't he, or knows his office? Yeah, he just mentioned that he backed him up in a couple calls. And that's one thing that intrigues me about the constable's office. That's really what they're doing. You're, you're kind of the jack-of-all-trades of, of the police force because you have almost the flexibility to react 
but also implement systems that other offices wouldn't be able to do. And that's what makes it political in a sense that depending on who your constable is depends on what segments are bringing into the constable's office. Because, like, you can go on their website for constable precinct number four, and you can see everything they do. And every constable precinct office is different. And it's kind of crazy to me. And one thing, uh, one thing I like to talk, you know, kind of fictional. It's in the future, like say ten years, twenty years from now, in this area with the growth, what do you see? Because the new thing right now is the crimes against the children. Uh, what's it called, Nathan? Is it ICAC? ICAC. Internet crimes against That's children. That's kind of the current thing that we all are implementing across the precincts. What do you see in ten to twenty years being the new thing, similar to that? Well, you know, there's new programs that are coming, going to come into effect. Um, but for instance, we have a toll road coming into our precinct, so um, somebody's going to have to patrol that toll road. So we may be um, doing contract positions for the toll road. So as new programs come into the area and into the precinct, we'll address those and, and fulfill the needs. We're going to take a quick break here on Mornings of Lone Star with Meet the Candidates. I'm sitting with Nathan Arizani and, of course, the constable precinct number four, who's re- or I guess he's Rerunning is that the correct way to say it, or how would you like to running for re-election? Running for re-election, Ronnie Hayden. He's got his men outside. This is I'm going to get phone calls. I know I'm going to get phone calls. I'm posting pictures right now. So if you're on Facebook, Lone Star Internet Radio, Montgomery County Lifestyle, there is a posse of epic proportions in downtown Conroe. The East County has invaded. <laughs> yeah, that's, good, that's a good here, way to put wait, it. Before you go to break, you notice how Constable Ryan Gable. And Montgomery County District Attorney Brett Ligon are inside your studios. They're not with that rowdy little well, bunch out there. It's safe in here. It's safe. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break here on Mornings of Lone Star. We'll be back after this. Stick around. Manny's Barbecue and Grill, where the brisket is cooked slow and the people are friendly. Howdy, y'all. Wayne Michaels with Lone Star Country Nights, inviting you to stop by Manny's Barbecue and Grill, the best barbecue I've ever had in Montgomery County. Enjoy sliced beef, hamburgers, desserts, and maybe a cold one to top off a great lunch or dinner with friends and family. Manny's Barbecue and Grill at 1101 West Dallas, right next to the Conroe Post Office. Manny's Barbecue and Grill, Conroe's new home for great barbecue. You're listening to Mornings of Lone Star here at IRLoneStar.com. Meet the candidates from 9 to 10 every weekday morning leading up to voting on March 1st. Make sure to register to vote by February 1st. That's mctx.org slash election. And I have all the goodies right there. It has a sample ballot, has polling locations, has polling times, and also has to check your register for voting. So you got to do that by February 1st. And we haven't confirmed if, that's, if it's over on that uh, f- February 1st or you have till the 31st to do it. I haven't really been confirmed on that one yet. Anybody on there know that? As long Anybody? as you signed up by the 31st or does it roll over to the 1st because 31st is a weekend? For- Anybody. See, these people should know this stuff. Yeah, but red alert. Red alert. Uh-oh. Conroe Police Department. Conroe's finest. They're out there trying to see if that's a bunch of hooligans, hoodlums, <laughs> hooligans out there. Wave, wave Conroe PD. Police Chief Dupuy would be proud. I mean, there is a lot of people There out is there. a Conroe PD out there wanting to know what those hooligans are doing, dude. I believe it. They, they ride their bikes in the, every morning here. <laughs> but uh, we're sitting here with Roddy Hayden. He's running for Consul Precinct number 4. And we're talking more of, uh, well, I would like to talk more of, is how that county is pretty big. And especially, what, well, you've been you've been constable for how long? Um, seven, seven years. Seven years. So in those seven years, tell me what, what's the most exciting thing that's happened to, to the constable's office. And especially what have you all achieved so far? Well, I think... You know, the exciting thing is the growth. We've been able to expand the department. We've refocused the department's mission to want to protect and serve. We've deployed the resources into the neighborhoods. We've increased the personnel, increased patrols. We've instituted 24-hour, seven-day-a-week service. Um, We talked about Internet crimes against children earlier. Uh, We've improved our training, cross-training, and improved the cooperation with the other agencies uh, which which in, eventually in, in, improves service and yeah, that response seems, time. That seems like the core of the constable's office is working really well with others and other agencies in, in the county. Cause it like does, and the um, law enforcement in East Murray County has a reliable partner with the Precinct 4 constable's office. And uh, one thing I like to ask is the hot topic among other precincts is the 24-7 topic. Are you guys 24-7? We are 24-7, and we have been for some time. Do you know how long? Just wondering. Just um, soon after I took office, we were able to. Um, well, I'd say within the first six to eight months, we were able to to go twenty four seven with the department. Because that that to me is probably the most political thing right now with the constable's office. A lot of people don't believe, do believe, whatnot, and especially how you go about getting twenty four seven. Because there's the commissioner court and what you guys propose. 
do you have anything lined up right now? You can give us an idea if when you do become constable, what you propose doing to these to the court to the, the commissioner's court. Did reelected as constable. Reelected. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, we've had a good working relationship with the commissioner's court. <clears throat> um, the county judge, the commissioner's court, they've all endorsed me in this election. We're able to, when we go and ask for a certain thing in the court, we're able to show that we need it. We bring on statistical information. We're able to show a need for something, and they provide the resources. One of the things I'd like to bring up, if, if you don't mind, you've got two fellow law enforcement. You've actually got the head chief law enforcement officer, so to speak, in Montgomery County. Why do the, why are these guys here? Why do they support you? Maybe they want to jump in and, and tell us something about what you've done or, or why they're even here. That'd be great. I'm glad to have them. Uh, the district attorney, Constable Ryan Gable, we've all, um, we, we all team up and – yeah, and we work together, and we'll get them in on the next segment. We'll get because we got to shift around. There's a lot of people here. It's kind of crazy. I, I, I'm kind of surprised. I, I bet you're not worried at all for this election. No, I'm. Um, I'm confident. And uh, that's one thing. It's funny, and I'm learning more and more about local politics here on the Meet the Candidates. Is the endorsement how important that is for every everybody, and especially we had the uh, Texas Conservative Tea Party Coalition in here with uh, Dwayne Ham and their group. And I got to li- I got to know a little bit about how these things work, and especially with the ideals of the citizens forming these groups to endorse certain people. With your group, can you give me an idea who's endorsed you? Because some Proud people to. really care about that. We, um, you know, there there's several tea parties in Montgomery County, and and with any group, they're not always going to see eye to eye on the same issue. But I'm proud to say that every tea party in Montgomery County that that is in my precinct has endorsed me. Uh, we received the Montgomery County Tea Party endorsement, the Texas Patriot Pack, the uh, TCT. PC. Oh man, that's okay. Texas Nobody Conservative the Texas Tea- Conservative Tea Party Coalition. I'm the only one. Thank you, Nathan. Do that. You remember that? Um, <laughs> the Conservative Republicans of Texas has endorsed me. Um, I, I'm proud of my law enforcement endorsements. The Montgomery County Law Enforcement Association, the, even the Houston Police Officers Association, the Montgomery County Sheriff, the Harris County Sheriff Ron Hickman even endorsed me. Um, recently, we've received the endorsement from CLEAT, uh, um, which is a large law enforcement um, support agent, uh, agency. Um, there are over 2, 000, 2, uh, 20,000 members strong in Texas. And um, I even received the endorsement from my opponent's boss down in Harris County, Constable Mark Herman. Now, with, wow. that, with that in mind, with that much support, does that make you want to keep running for the constables every time someone comes up against you, especially when voting comes up? Or is this something you got one more term, or do you want to keep going? Well, I, um, you know, I'm, we're doing a good job. I've got a great group of men and women over at the constable's office, from our administrative uh, clerical staff all the way to our deputies that are on the street. They, they do a good job to make East Montgomery County a better and safer place. And as long as I have the desire to continue and to continue to bring good programs to the precinct, I'm going to keep doing it. You know, Dick, a lot of times what we get into and we kind of bypass it because there's so much excitement um, is like their biography, where they started. I understand this man started at like age 18, 19, 20, something like that as the detention officer. And one of his partners in crime in that job was District Attorney Brett Ligon. Is that true? That's true. Brett Ligon and I, we both started working for... Sheriff Joe Corley, uh, and we were civilian jailers working in the jail together. What is it? Det- what's a detention officer? Is that what, a person who works in the jail? Mm-hmm. That's a civilian that works in the jail alongside the deputies. Oh, okay, so it's kind of a training. Is that what your, I guess, your career path started? That's was where I started that? at. It. I started there when I was 19 years old. And then can you keep going with me with your years? So a detention uh, officer to... Yeah, I started there. I worked my way through the ranks uh, while I was working in the jail. I went through the police academy and become a deputy and worked in the jail I, worked, I even worked in district courts for a while as a bailiff um worked in the in, at the sheriff's department i was um a corporal in the patrol division for a while and then i was elected constable after that well there you go so you're right you're, re, you're it's a re-election running for re-election for constable precinct number four we're gonna take a quick break because you got some guests that we want to get on the air with us nathan arizotti with montgomery county lifestyle now do you have a website that people can check out right now uh if they wanted to get more information from you i do our campaign web website is constable rowdy hayden.com we also have a facebook um constable rowdy hayden on facebook well, there you go we're gonna take a quick music break here on mornings of lone star with meet the candidates you can ask questions on montgomery county lifestyles facebook also on lone star internet radio and we'll be back after this. 
Imagine a place where you can sip on Italian coffee and have a sandwich, followed by a fabulous, delectable pastry. We invite you to stop by Conroe Coffee to experience old world charm. Conroe Coffee is located next to the historic Creighton Theatre in downtown Conroe. We are open seven days a week. Please check our website for business hours at conroecoffee.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a caffeinated day. I like leaving that in there right there. That was uh, George Strait's new one, Cheaper Than a Shrink. Which, can I say that was a song request? That was am a song I, request. Am I allowed to say that song request? We have uh, Rowdy Hayden in the studio. Check him out online, ConstableRowdyHayden.com. He's also on Facebook, Constable Rowdy Hayden. Uh, just search that. And he is, running, he is running for Constable Precinct number 4. He's looking for re-election, folks. And it sounds like he's almost got it in the back from what I understand. With the support here, he's got the bodies and he's also got the experience, and he's also got the, uh, I guess, other, you know, he looks nice. We got that, right? Well, when you're looking outside at the Rowdy Hayden posse, would you would you be proud of those bodies or not, Constable, Constable See, Rowdy Hayden? Look is, around behind you. This you know, is, a lot are you the, proud of those bodies? <laughs> most of those are, are deputies that work at the constable office, and, of course, they're off duty, but, I, I you know, I'm proud that my employees and deputies there support me. Uh, are they all single? Is that why they're really here? No. <laughs> no are they not. looking for single women that work at the courthouse? And some of them's been working all night, so they should be home in bed. Well, well, I, I got to say this, and Dick, tell me if I'm wrong. We've had some pretty exciting guests and some people yeah, that brought some posses. We've never, ever, ever, ever had this kind of. They blew Dwayne Ham out of the water with the Texas Conservative. Well, he brought a poodle. So. He brought, <laughs> Was it a poodle? I don't really know. It was it a was little tiny, black three pound it, something yeah, out of it. Was what it was weird. I know Leo next door from Connor Coffee appreciates it too. She's like, "What's going on next door?" And uh, I was like, "Oh, there's just officers from East County." And they're like, "Oh," and so uh, she's been listening actually, and she never knew really what what happened in East County. Now she knows. So we actually have you brought two other guests and uh, one reoccurring guest. We have uh, District Attorney Brett Ligon in the studio too. If you don't mind, we're we got to close it up pretty soon. We got the Cindy Cochran show coming up next, and. Uh, Shane Barnhill, if y'all don't know who that is, he's a musician, a, te- a Texas artist. He's going to be singing live and all that kind of stuff on that. But uh, introduce you guys, uh, introduce yourself so you don't mind, and tell us why are you here interrupting him on his Meet the Candidates time. Uh, District Attorney Brett Ligon, and um, I'm just here to show my support for Rowdy. I've probably known him longer than anyone in within the law enforcement community, and I like to tell people I've known Rowdy since he had hair and I only had one chin. <laughs> So that kind of takes us back to a, a long time ago when uh, Ratty and I were both detention officers with the Sheriff's Department. Um, I think what goes missed out there is not only the work, but the thing that keeps Rowdy's people going is that Rowdy's a good leader. And there's a difference between being a manager and a leader. And Rowdy keeps his troops going, keeps them going at night, uh, filling those gaps in there in services uh, that needed to be brought over to East Montgomery County. But the, the thing that most people uh, don't know if they only know him professionally is until you get to know him personally, Rowdy is the biggest uh, trickster, the, the biggest pranker with probably all of law enforcement. Uh, I've seen Sheriff Gage's hat come up missing several times, only to be found on Rowdy's head. Uh, I've seen uh, handcuffs being placed on prosecutors before that prosecutors didn't need the handcuffs. So, uh, you know, Rowdy's um, his uh, enthusiasm for the job spills over to his community. And I, I think that's why if you went to his fundraiser the other night, uh, the whole community came out there. Uh, Ryan has that same effect within his community, and, and it feels good to get behind people that that the, they're mission focused, but they're also good men, also. Well, I think that's absolutely it's important when you when we talked about endorsements and you see the people who are behind you, Rowdy. How like basically, like I said, it's you kind of got it all wrapped up. And how do you feel about that with all this support? And is there pressure? To well, perform? Dick, you, you you never think you have it in the bag, but you know we're we're working hard. Yeah. Um, we're going through all the motions that we need to go through, um, and our citizens. This the outpouring of support we've had has just been overwhelming, and I and I can't be thankful enough. And then who else is here? Hi, Constable Ryan Gable with Precinct Three, Montgomery County, and I'd like to just say that I'm here in support of Constable Hayden. He's been a uh, an asset to us. Uh, been an asset with helping us investigate certain crimes, internet crimes against children. It's been a uh, a great service to us to have Constable Hayden um, there to help. Uh, also, just be that friend in law enforcement to, you know, work hand in hand. We speak just about every day, so you've got elected officials that communicate daily for the betterment of police service in Montgomery County, and we're proud of those things. And I don't want to trample too much on Ryan, but as uh, Nathan said, I'm 
I'm not a rookie to the radio, but, but I do have a face for radio. What I think that's important for the for the listeners and the supporters to know is these two constables are leading the way within Montgomery County. Um, you're looking at a revolution in law enforcement, and there's there's kind of the old way that constable departments ran, which was very much unto themselves. And when you get Rowdy in, you get Ryan in, and they start thinking, all right, what are the parts, what are the gaps in law enforcement? And they've talked about them. Their agencies were the first ones in the constable departments to turn to 24 hours of law enforcement. What a lot of people across Montgomery County don't realize is we have several police agencies that are not 24-hour police agencies. And that was a priority to both of these guys. You can see it in their productivity. You can see it uh, within their community as well. And so these two guys, I think, are leading the way. And they are really, and you, you mentioned it earlier, the politics. Every candidate who's running now for a constable in the other precincts, they're all saying at least one common theme, which is those agencies need to turn to 24 hours. Well, these are the two guys that started it, and everybody's starting to see within their community, whether it's in West County or Central here in Conroe, and people are saying, well, why can't, what we, why can't we have what Ryan does? Why can't we have what Rowdy does? Well, you can. It's just you have to have the right people at the top that are leading the way, and these two guys are leading the way. Well, if you don't mind right now, we have about five minutes until we have to get out of here. And, Rowdy, I want to give that time to you to promote whatever's coming up, uh, especially if you have any platform issues you want to talk about or give me a reason why to vote. Now's your time to do that. Well, I think, you know, you know your number one reason to choose me in this election is experience and qualifications. I've um, I've, I've learned the, the qualifications and um, the necessary duties of the constable's office. I have the experience to continue to lead. Um, I think our record stands on itself. We've, um, like, like, like the DA said, Brett and I, we've kind of plowed the way with where the direction in which constable's office should go. Um, we have some great programs in in place now that we want to continue. Uh, new programs to um, to come in the future. I, I'll give you an example of one program that we're going to start. Is we train with the school districts for an active shooter situation that you know heaven forbid it would ever happen in one of our schools but we train for it we've taken taken that a step further and we're about to launch another um program where we go in go into churches and we're meet with the church's security team we train them for a, a same type of incidents because um, we've seen that in other parts of the country where churches are experiencing the same problems and um to my knowledge nobody's been been working with our our churches on that so we want to you know be proactive there to try to try to prevent something from happening um we want to continue our 24 7 coverage uh internet crimes against children i can't say enough about that our children that's our most valued asset is um to keep them children safe and i think we've done a great job of that in montgomery county um not only in precinct four but the other constables as well have um stepped up to the plate to that as well as the district attorney's office um Training, the training never stops. I'm currently enrolled in a leadership command college at Sam Houston State University. So I'm um, trying to continue that um, to further my education to bring back even more ideals and programs to the department. Uh, continue to protect and serve our community. Our neighborhoods are pro- patrolled and safer, and uh, we want to continue that. Well, Rowdy, thank you so much for coming in. Check him out online, folks, ConstableRowdyHayden.com. He's on Facebook, Constable Rowdy Hayden. Coming up next is the Cindy Cogger Show. Nathan Arizani, again, thank you so much. Can you give the listeners an idea of what's going to happen tomorrow on Meet the Candidates, if you don't mind? County Judge Craig Dole will be here to talk about the state of the office, what's going on in the county, some initiatives, the road bond. But <clears throat> one of the big things he wants to announce is how uh, not only do, did did – the county just saved millions and millions of dollars, but when they sold the bonds, uh, they actually made a lot of money. Oh, well, so, I'm interested to hear more about that because hey, it sounds shady for, to me. Well, it's a good chance for a couple of precinct constables to jump in there and say, I need some more money. I'll say it. Uh, Maybe you guys judge, need to bring some breakfast to uh, County Judge Craig Doyle tomorrow morning. Well, I think I speak for Constable Gable. <laughs> judge Doyle and the Commissioner's Court has been very good law enforcement. In the absolutely. Last budget yeah, absolutely. That's, that's thank true. you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being in the studio today. Nathan, again, thank you to you. Coming up next is the Cindy Cochran Show. If you just now caught the tail end of the interview with Roddy Hayden with Meet the Candidates, we're going to be posting the podcast soon, hopefully today and tomorrow. So keep an eye out on SoundCloud.com or YouTube.com and look up Lone Star Internet Radio. We're going to take a quick break. Coming up next at the Cindy Cochran Show at 10 o'clock, special guest host will be Michael Player. He's going to have Shane Barnhill. And speaking of Shane, here's some music by him. This song is called Outlaw Angels. 
Thank you for checking out a podcast on Lone Star Internet Radio. Lone Star Internet Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas. If you are interested in sponsoring a program for Lone Star Internet Radio, just visit us online at IRLoneStar.com or message us on Facebook. We are always taking song requests on Twitter, and if you are interested in getting involved with the station, by either hosting your own show, or if you want to be a DJ, just contact Dick at dick at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Internet Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station.